Welcome back to First Take, presented by AARP. Breaking news into Sports Center, according to our insider Adrian Wojnarowski and senior writer Zach Lowe, the Suns are finalizing a deal that would send Eric Bledsoe to the Bucks for Greg Monroe and a first and second round pick. Bledsoe has been away from the Suns since October 23rd when Suns GM Ryan McDonough sent him home after Bledsoe tweeted, quote, I don't want to be here. According to our Dave McMenamin, Bledsoe is not expected to play tonight when the Bucks take on the Cavs. Now, don't sleep on just how big of an acquisition this is for Milwaukee. Bledsoe is one of just nine players that have averaged at least 20 points and six assists dating back to the start of the 2015-16 season. And he is in the prime of his career, too, just 27 years old. Much more on that trade coming up on the 6th with Michael and Jamel. They'll also preview the big game for the 4-6 and six Cavs who will try and ride the ship against the Greek Freak and the Bucks. Get ready for everything you need to know for the second release of the college football playoff rankings. And ahead of tonight's 30 for 30, the Nature Boy. They will sit down with the legendary Ric Flair, so you got to keep a lock of the 6. Now let's get it back to first take. Antonietta, thank you. A lot going on. So Eric Bledsoe heading to the Bucks, fellas. Stephen A., how much better does he make Milwaukee? I think he makes them better. He's a, he's a very good on-ball defender. He can put points up on the board. He's hardcore. He's, he's tenacious. He goes after it. Uh, he can play the point position. Um, and he, he just adds another dimension to the Milwaukee Bucks. We like Brogdon and others, but at the same time, you don't have a Bledsoe on your squad. And to have somebody like him with the Greek freak, I think makes them incredibly formidable. I'm still not going to put them as the second best team in the Eastern Conference, but I will tell you, he helps that cause tremendously. And if Milwaukee advances to the conference finals, it wouldn't surprise me. I've always actually thought Bledsoe's an elite talent. You know, he doesn't have elite size, obviously, but he's an elite f talent. You see other ballers in the NBA identify him as a real baller, and, and it's obvious. He's eye-popping for the reasons that Stephen A. mentioned. You know, those are among the reasons. Uh, it's a little bit curious because the Bucks really are, if anything, have set the trend toward going longer and taller and bigger at every position, and that's clearly not the case with Bledsoe, but I think this reflects the fact that he could get out of Monroe's deal where they weren't going to re-sign him anyway, get something for him that makes him them better now, while Thon Maker is developing their seven-foot-one center, because the reason the Bucks aren't better right now is because the trajectory of Maker's development, or McCor, correct, correct pronunciation, is not, is not going quite like in a linear way up. Right. It's there's some peaks and valleys. And because he hasn't been very good this year so far, they're not as good as they might otherwise be. So Bledsoe helps them at least in the short term while they can see, in fact, are they going with this kind of bigger, longer, better kind of uh, team that they've constructed. And that depends on Maker's development in the interim. Bledsoe makes them a better team. Yeah. Posting career highs in points and assists last season. Gentlemen, it hasn't been a great go of it for Lonzo Ball. Let's get into that. So it begins. LeVar not happy with Lonzo's playing time. He's not in college anymore. In an interview with Bleacher Report, LeVar says he's uh, the Lakers need to let Lonzo play the whole fourth quarter and they will always win. He'll get into a better flow. Stephen A., does LeVar have a point? No, he does not. I don't want to hear this nonsense from LeVar Ball. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to listen to it. I'm not trying to hear it. The fact of the matter is Lonzo Ball has been passive. Uh, you go up against Ball Portland the other night with Damian Lillard just reminding the world what a study is dropping 32 on you and you attempt two shots. Attempt. My issue with Lonzo Ball is not his shooting percentage from the field or from three, which is porous, by the way. It's the absence of aggression. Magic Johnson has acknowledged it. Luke Walton has acknowledged it. Other uh, teammates have acknowledged it. People are looking for him to be more aggressive. The way LeVar Ball sounds, what do you want him to do? I mean, do, do we need to give him a massage? I mean, what are we going to get him in a sports psychology class, psychology class or something? I mean, what the hell is going on here? What do you need for him to do? He's a basketball player. To talk about how he needs to play in the fourth quarter or what have you, those things need to be earned. If you ain't looking to do anything through the first three damn quarters, why should we want you in there in the fourth quarter? Lonzo Ball has to step up and be more aggressive. This is not about his skill set or lack thereof, which to my mind is questionable at this moment in time. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because I'm rooting for the kid. But I don't want to hear that he needs more time in the fourth quarter when he ain't doing a damn thing quarters one through three. You got to show up and be aggressive. His father's aggressive. He appears not to be, and he would need to change that if showtime is to ever truly be revitalized. You don't have any three-point shooters on the squad. you got to create shots for these dudes. Right now, the best rookie on the Los Angeles Lakers is Kyle Kuzma. It is not Lonzo Ball. He needs to step his game up. Look, this is what you get with LeVar Ball. 
You knew this coming in. He's going to speak his mind. I mean, one of the things that I have an issue with him, and I addressed him directly about this when he was on the show, Stephen A., last time uh, when we were in L.A., is that he seems to bully sometimes people who don't have the platforms to hit back. And that's what bothers me about him. You know, when he speaks truth to power, whatever, when he speaks his mind, whatever, when he goes at the little guy or gal, it bothers me. And he said, basically, his response was, look, I treat everyone the same, big, small, whoever it is. I'm always me. And here he is being him. So I don't begrudge him that. But let's take the content of what he said. He said his son needs more time on the floor. First of all, if you're going to play as much as Lonzo plays, you're going to rest early in the fourth quarter. That's how it works. But secondly, he's averaging more minutes, Lonzo Ball is, than any rookie in the NBA except Ben Simmons. Now, Lonzo Ball is talented. I think he's going to have an outstanding career. Ben Simmons is clearly better than Lonzo Ball, and it ain't close. And I'm a Lonzo Ball fan. But Lonzo Ball would have to turn the world upside down right now with his play to make me believe he's on Ben Simmons' level at any point. Simmons is like a new, the new Greek freak. He's amazing. And it also shows you, I think, the difference between selecting first and second in the draft. Not that they were in the same draft, but Ben Simmons goes first, Brandon Ingram goes second. The Lakers wound up with three second, second overall picks in recent years. Ingram instead of Simmons. How's that working out? D'Angelo Russell instead of Carl Anthony Towns. How's that working out? This year's a little different. Fultz is already hurt, and who knows who'll be the best out of this crop. But so far, uh, it's, you know, Lonzo Ball is not putting any distance between himself and the rest of the pack. And Ben Simmons, because he missed last year, is. So, he, and that's the only guy getting more minutes than Lonzo Ball. So for LeVar to come out and say Lonzo needs even more time on the floor, I, I don't think so. It's a rookie getting over a half hour a game in the NBA. That's plenty. If he's not hitting his shot, he's not hitting his shot. Don't make excuses. Just get better. I got you. I mean, listen, I, I don't have much to add beyond that yep. because I've said what I've said. Uh, I'm a fan. I, I Listen, I root for Lonzo because as a person, he seems really, really a really decent guy. Uh, that's, I don't want to say overwhelmed uh, because he seems to come across like he's shrugging it off. But the presence of LeVar... Um, and a rhetoric that he has spewed mm -hmm. has put a, 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 an, a, an incredible amount of pressure on his shoulders. I'm not saying that I expect you to live up to it in terms of your actual performance, Max, because I understand that as a rookie, as a point guard, le leading Laker Nation, and Showtime, I get it. You're not going to always measure up. My issue with Lonzo is not that. There is no excuse for the absence of aggression that he yeah. has mm -hmm. shown. De'Aaron Fox, Tatum, Dennis Smith Jr. in Dallas, Donovan Mitchell in Utah, Simmons in his first year playing in the league right now, and so many others. It's not just about them performing. Yep. They go out there and play like they want it. Mm -hmm. He yep. plays like he's just going through the motion more than half the time, and that is inexcusable. Yeah, and I've heard some people not just say aggression, but use the word soft. We'll see as his career continues. Gentlemen, when we come back, American League MVP, rookie of of the year finalist Aaron Judge is here we are all fired up about it it is officially judgment